Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. I'm devastated that we're not more of us, but uh, there are some refreshments to be had at the end, tea and coffee and some homemade biscuits that have all the bad stuff, uh, lots of gluten and butter and but fair trade sugar, and chocolate chips are really bad. And there's some other border biscuits that you can check all of the ingredients if you've got any allergies. But it's wonderful to see you. I'm hoping some people might be lost and might sneak in. Um, but we would love to welcome tonight um, Karen Park, who's an authorised lay minister, which means that she's not a reader like me. She doesn't lead services and preach like me. She is like a leader, a leader of mission. And she also is a champion for Arosha, which is an amazing organization. Our local URC have silver already, so we're well jealous. Uh, we have got bronze, but we really feel that we will spread this word along. And thank you to Julian, who's come also to record tonight. So it will be going out via CTOD to anybody who wants to join and hear how important this message is and pass it along. So I'll hand over to Karen and I'll turn the lights down to dim if that's okay. Is there any questions you might want to... Okay, thanks. Is that one muted? Is the handheld muted for the moment, just in case it gives feedback? Lovely, thank you very much. Oh, hello everyone, it's so lovely to see you. Um, can you hear me all right? That's good. Do let us know if you can't. Yeah, if anything changes, do let us know because we can adjust things. Yeah. Hello, I'm Karen Park. Thank you for inviting me to speak today. I'm a volunteer speaker for Arosha UK, an authorised lay minister and eco-church champion at St Mark's Church in Holbrook in North Horsham. I've always been concerned about the environment and now as a grandma, I'm even more concerned about the legacy we are leaving for future generations. We're living in deeply troubling times with a steep rise in the cost of living and poverty, extreme temperatures, wildfires and floods. Communities and churches are responding generously to help food banks and refugees caring for the poor and vulnerable. Advancing climate change and biodiversity loss will only increase human suffering and conflict. But fortunately, what's good for the climate helps to tackle poverty too. I have a lot of information to share with you this evening, but if you want to sign up for the Eco Church's newsletter, which is a, a group that I run in Horsham, I'll be able to email you the slides and my notes, copies of these, um, and that includes all the web links as well, which, and you're very welcome to share those with others. Arosha UK is a Christian charity working to protect and restore the natural world and committed to equipping Christians and churches in the UK to care for the environment, working together with many organisations to improve biodiversity, address climate change and share learning. Arosha UK's projects include the Warfields Urban and Fox Earth Meadows Rural Nature Reserves, Partners in Action Support Network for Christian Land Managers, Eco Church Project for Churches and the Wild Christian Project for Individuals and Families. Our God is the creator and Lord of all things. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. Human beings are identified as being one with creation, formed from the dust of the earth, yet bearing a unique responsibility for creation. God provided sufficient for mankind and all living creatures, a sustainable ecosystem. God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. God values mankind, giving us the elevated role of being a responsible steward for the earth to safeguard the integrity of creation. And as eco-churches, we are learning how we can better take care of God's creation. In Romans chapter 8, verses 19 and 22, St Paul wrote, For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. While St Paul wasn't talking about the climate crisis in this passage, his words remind us that we have a relationship with creation that is broken. 
Stewardship in a biblical sense does not mean that we are separate from creation. Rather, as stewards of God's creation, we have a responsibility to care for the earth, respecting and cherishing it. But we are living in a climate and ecological emergency. And if we understand how valuable creation is to God who made it, the suffering of creation should grieve us. And although humanity has plundered the earth and caused so much damage, we can also participate in God's restoration. The most important commandments are to love God and to love our neighbours, and tackling the climate crisis is vital to both. What does the Lord require of us? To act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. The various church denominations recognise this emergency and have resources to help. For the Church of England, it's the five marks of mission, the fifth one being treasure, which is promoted by the Anglican Communion worldwide to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. Why? Because we understand as value as a precious item entrusted to us, precious both for its rarity and beauty, but also for its emotional value. It's our home. The Methodist Church has Action for Hope, Six Steps to Net Zero. The United Reformed Church integrates concern for environmental issues into the whole of church life. And the Catholic Church has the Call of Creation teaching document and Laudato Si on the care of the common home and the update Laudate Deum, which was published by Pope Francis in October 23. The Baptist Union Environment Network works for justice for creation and people impacted by environmental change. And the Salvation Army is committed to helping change attitudes, resulting in a more responsible use of our planet. So um, it's really good to look at not only your denominations resources and the Eco Church resources, but also those of other denominations. Arosha in Portuguese means the rock. In 1983, an Anglican minister and his wife, Peter and Miranda Harris, set up Arosha, a Christian wildlife study centre in Portugal, which inspired many visitors from around the world, including another Anglican minister and his wife, Dave and Anne Bookless, who co-founded Arosha UK in 2001 as a charity registered as a Christian conservation organisation. It started with a West London restoration project now known as the Wolffields Urban Nature Reserve. Eco Church is an Arosha UK project which was launched in 2016 for all denominations in England and Wales. The free survey is online and it records what a church is already doing to care for God's earth. Churches registered their intent to take action and work towards a bronze, silver or gold award, which enables churches to measure and celebrate their progress engage practically in caring for the earth and for this to be embedded into every aspect of church life. There are free online resources to inform decisions on, five in, on steps in five key areas of church life. Worship and teaching, management of church buildings, management of church land, community and global engagement and personal lifestyle. It's easy for a church to register and start the survey, which is automatically saved. The lines instantly change as points accumulate, reflecting the award level achieved. And churches must reach the required standard in each area that applies. Some churches are not responsible for premises and some do not have influence over any land. And there are just simple buttons for the churches to click to in indicate that. You can see the horizontal lines, they change colour as, um, a, as the church progresses. So each time you answer a question, they, they automatically change. So this church, for example, at the top left, you can see it's gold for worship and teaching, moving across, bronze for buildings, bronze for land, and down at the bottom, silver for community and global engagement, and silver for lifestyle. But although the church has got a gold and two silver levels, overall, they're bronze, because they're bronze or higher in each level. So that church is eligible for a bronze award but well on their way to silver and for worship and teaching already gold. Hello, yes. Silver. You have to get silver in each one of those five things. Each one of those five things, yes. 
So once you've done the survey, there's a need to find out answer, which is the most popular answer to begin with. And then it's a question of just emailing and chatting with people to find out things like what rating is the boiler? What insulation is there in different areas of the church, the church hall and the vicarage or the manse? Uh, and then and gradually answering all the questions. You can, I don't know if you can see it, but it says, you've answered 10 out of 10 questions for buildings that church has answered 32 of 33 questions. So they've got one that still don't know or need to find out. Um, and so it's wonderful because it saves it instantly and you can just look back and see where you are. Under each question are the relevant resources, which is really useful. Uh, and the resources were updated during COVID. Uh, so um, they're, they're an excellent resource. It's good to keep an eco diary right from the beginning and photographs. For a bronze or a silver award, you simply apply online from the survey, having got your vicar or minister to check that, that they're happy with all of the responses. Um, but for a gold award, assessors come to visit from Arosha UK. Uh, you, you have to write a report as part of your application for a gold award, summarising what you've been doing. So it's really good to have the photos and the diary to look back on. Once you've completed the survey, it's good to copy all those answers into a new survey. You just give it a different name, like test survey or going for bronze, going for silver, whatever you want to call it. And I found that by doing right, if you can screen share, you know, split screen or have two screens up, if you use your right click button, you can open the survey on the, the test survey on another screen. And then it's easy just to copy across the answers. Uh, it's a bit, bit tedious to do it, but once you've done it, and then you've got a survey you can play about with. So you can have a look. So for this church, I would say to them, look at the um, community and global engagement and lifestyle, they're silver, worship and teaching is gold, but to focus on their buildings and their land and have a look to think, what are the easy wins? What could that church do quite easily? Let's see what difference it would make. Um, and then by experimenting, you can then work out some goals some easy wins, quick wins, like using recycled toilet paper, for example, and, and other ones. One of the questions for buildings that's worth a lot of points is looking into the feasibility of things like uh, ground or air source heat pumps, solar panels, uh, you know, the, um, wind turbines, although I haven't found a church yet that can use those. But it's looking into that. And just document that in your diary, the research that you've done to see. Some churches, the roof's not strong enough. But even listed buildings, it is possible to get permission for solar panels. So if you have a listed building, don't be put off. But, um, but that's worth a lot of points to do that research. And it's a good thing to do because when your boilers come to the end of their life, if they're gas or oil, it's good to not look to replace with those. And in fact, for Church of England, now you have to get faculty to replace those. Uh, you've got to prove that it's the only, only way of doing it. So it's getting that research done in preparation for when you have to replace your boilers. So application for the awards is online. Award-winning churches receive a free certificate and can purchase a plaque made from recycled wood. So the whole process doesn't cost the church anything apart from the time spent with uh, researching things and communicating with each other because it's free to do the survey and the certificate is free. Although donations to Russia UK are always very welcome. The Eco Church resources correspond to the survey questions. You can quickly explore why and how to take the recommended actions. And there are also longer reads and case studies of churches, which is really interesting. Worship and teaching is the first of the five key eco-church areas. Pardon me. And there are eco-church resources on preaching, worship, prayer, and church communications. And also there are excellent kids and youth resources for each age group, which explore the five eco-church survey areas and include a game, a Bible story, an activity, action, prayer, and worship. So do share those with your youth and children's workers. Arosha UK has free education plans for ages 3 to 14 years, which are suitable for schools, community groups, and churches. The children can have fun, enjoying exploring nature and caring for our planet through interactive indoor and outdoor activities. These are linked to the national curriculum using scientific inquiry to educate. So please tell teachers and schools about these free resources. If any members of your congregation are church governors, uh, school governors, that might be a good way for them to share that information with the schools. There are also resources on the Eco Church website for small groups, including Tenants of the King, which is uh, a four 
four one-hour interactive Bible study sessions about today's climate crisis. The study guides, you can buy printed versions, which don't cost very much, or you can download them for free. And there are YouTube video expert interviews by the Right Reverend Graham Tomlin, the Reverend Mark Mellowish, Dr. Ruth Valerio and Dr. Justin Thacker. And there are in-depth leaders notes, which you can download too. Hello, welcome to the lady who's just arrived. Don't worry, you don't need to take lots of notes. It's being recorded uh, and I'll be able to email you the PowerPoint slides and my notes afterwards so you can share them with others. The second key area of eco-churches is management of church buildings. Each church is unique and needs to carefully consider the right combination of actions. Some are quick wins, others will need careful planning and expert advice. 7% of churches are already net zero carbon and a sample of very high energy using buildings indicates that all can achieve net zero carbon. Guidance for churches includes keeping the buildings well maintained, wind and water tight, looking at loft insulation and managing drafts. Buying 100% renewable electricity and green gas is the simplest thing that you can do to cut your net carbon footprint. So when your gas and electric contracts come up for renewal, do look at the green options. For Church of England, the parish buying, I can't remember what the name is, it's, it's on where you put your statistics on, uh, has different tariffs that are green that you can use. Electricity can be completely green, so they're getting it from solar and that. The gas is green in inverted commas, but it's the best that we can use at the moment for those that need the green. Um, where possible, do consider moving to electric heating, such as heat pumps, pew, infrared panel or chandelier heaters, and explore the possibility of solar panels. These more modern forms of heating, like the infrared panels and the chandelier heaters, heat the people rather than the building. Most churches have very tall ceilings. Yours isn't as tall as some of them. Um, and um, a church in Bristol pioneered trying some out, and the chandelier types can be done in modern designs or more traditional designs to suit the type of church, and you can have light and heating combined. So there's lots of new possibilities coming along. You can have heated seats. You can have heating under the seats for the church that have fixed pews. When you've reduced your energy use, you can offset the rest through climate stewards or other reputable schemes to become net zero. Another thing you can do is to consider where vegetation or trees can grow to naturally capture carbon. The Church of England Environment Programme has an excellent information webinars and recordings which are open to all denominations and they cover all the different aspects of eco-church and heating and lighting, insulation and everything. So do have a look on their website. They are technical webinars for non-technical people, and I've learnt a lot from them. And also, um, last year, they brought out climate resilience webinars, which when I read the list of new webinars, it was quite a shock to me and really brought home how serious the climate crisis is that the Church of England had brought out webinars on how to prepare your church buildings for more extreme weather and how to use your church to protect your community. That's the Church of England. The Church of England, it's the Environment and Climate Change webinars. On my handout that I'll e email you, it's got the web link in there. And it's a long list, you have to scroll down, of all the different webinars. So there's the recordings there of them and information about when they're doing them again. And as the information becomes out of date, they do them again. So it's a very good source of information. You can, if you register for a webinar, if you find you then can't make it, don't worry, because they will, because you've signed up, they will email you a link to the recording as soon as it becomes available. The Climate Emergency Toolkit was launched by Tier Fund in partnership with these organisations to help your church or organisation to respond to the climate emergency. It's free to download, and there are three simple steps. Prepare, where you start the conversation and plan your response. Declare or recognise as a church that climate change is now an emergency. And impact widely by partnering with others to champion climate action. Step by step, together we can bring hope and change to the climate crisis. Again, this is another free resource which you can download. At my church, St Mark's Church Holbrook, we've used this step-by-step -step guidance and we discussed and agreed on a statement as a PCC, which is just the church committee, to recognise the climate emergency. We've made an environmental policy, we've set goals and made a plan of action. Now's the time to act. 
will you join us? And I'll be sending you a link to um, our Eco Church webpage, and that takes you on to a copy of the statement that we made when we declared, uh, recognised the climate emergency, and also a blog that we wrote for the Climate Emergency Toolkit about our journey on that process. Management of church land is the third key area in the Eco Church survey, which is actively managing any outdoor space the church owns or has influence over to benefit native plants and wildlife and enable the community to access outdoor space, which is so important for our mental health. These are some pictures from my church at St Mark's, ideas from different people emerging to create an amazing garden for our community to enjoy. We've made a woodland path through a narrow strip of woodland along our southern border. We have seating areas in the sun and shade and have created a wildlife pond. A boundary dead hedge was created repurposing a large pile of branches and has become a haven for wildlife. We planted a platinum jubilee hedge which in time will replace an old fence. We've got bird nest boxes, hedgehog hotels and bowls of water for dogs and wildlife. The amazing bug church in the middle photo was built by one of our young people and his dad using things they found lying around in the church gardens and in their own garden. We've got ongoing wildlife surveys and we take part in the annual big butterfly count. And this year we've produced an environmental policy and a mowing plan and a Psalm 23 nature trail. Erosha UK's Partner in Action are working to help 25 target places and species which are struggling with the effects of climate change, habitat loss and pollution. For example, bees and butterflies, swifts, hedgehogs, native wildflowers and threatened habitats. They have information packs to help you monitor, record and practical actions that you can take. One of the 25 um, species or places is hedgehogs and they face prickly problems in towns and villages because there are far fewer insects now. Our gardens are too tidy, some deep ponds have no escape route, and the hazards of bonfires, strimmers, lawnmowers and slug pellets. And also solid boundaries. Hedgehogs struggle to find suitable habitats and food. I wonder if you know how far they walk at night looking for food. Has anyone got any idea? It's a long way. In one night, they roam up to two kilometres. That's one and a quarter miles. And they've only got little legs. So if they spend a lot of time walking around your garden and they can't get out, it's, it's quite a problem for them. So do try and make little highways under your fences. We've got one at home under our gate because I couldn't get under the fence so that they can go from garden to garden. So that distance is 20 football pitches long. A 13 by 13 centimetre hole is sufficient for them to get through and too small for most pets. And shallow bowls of water, as well as some wild areas, is good for them. At St Mark's Church, we created this little hedgehog highway linking the vicarage garden with the church garden near our woodland area. And we're caring for two adult hedgehogs who were rescued by the Rangers Lodge Wildlife Hospital and couldn't be released in the area that they'd been rescued from. Um, we've put some wooden hedgehog houses there which were made from recycled pallets and roof felt and the hedgehogs we've not seen them since they've been released but people hear them snuffling around and every night food is disappearing part of adopting them when we had to, food had to be put out every night so the vicar and his family are kindly doing that and we hope that they'll they'll either choose their hedgehog houses or elsewhere to hibernate over the winter for, to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, we planted a hedgerow using our hot bin composted food waste. And we have all ages who help uh, manage our garden. There's a gentleman in his 90s there with his great-grandson, who was five, putting some compost around the Jubilee hedgerow. Community engagement is another key eco-church area. Several churches in the Horsham area are public drop-off points for Sussex Green Living, which is a charity which recycles single-use plastic through TerraCycle. And other people, churches, just collect from their congregation. The um, bottom right photograph there is the collection area at our church. It's just a couple of wheelie bins outside the church which are accessible to the public any time. And it's drawn a number of people from the community along. We sometimes even put in their head in the church asking where the bins are to recycle their plastic. Soft plastics can be taken to supermarkets, but they're not very good at advertising that. So where they recycle carrier bags at the supermarkets, they will also take the soft plastics. For example, the film on the grapes, pun it, 
uh, and the, the bag that's around the toilet rolls. So anything that's soft that you scrunch up and it let go and it pings back out is a soft plastic. There may be local schemes in your area, I'm not sure, for charities for recycling. But if not, if you're interested to find out, I can put you in touch with Sussex Green Living. Uh, our church, in addition to that recycling, we also have little collection baskets at the back of church for hearing aids, glasses, corks, postcards, candles, tea lights, bras, uh, greetings cards, postage stamps, and a Bible reading note swap shop, which has been really helpful. Many areas have food banks, and it's great that churches are supporting those. Our community cafe, Holbrook Heart Cafe, is registered with the Chatty, Scafe, Ca Chatty Cafe scheme, and is also registered with the District Council as a warm space. So those two groups help to promote the cafe. We serve over 100 cups of tea and coffee every Tuesday, uh, which is wonderful. No large number of volunteers. The cakes, tea and coffee, everything is provided free. And we now are part of the social prescribing scheme. So local GPs are recommending that people that, that want company, that have got some mental health issues and other issues, can come along uh, with a carer or to be supported by the pastoral team that we have on duty at the cafe. We also collect food there for the food bank, but we're also very aware that some of the people that come need the food bank. But then we, we direct them to the food bank because the food bank gives them the support of looking at ways they could be saving money, benefits and things that they could claim. We have the Horsham Community Fridge. We host that um, on a Saturday a few times a year. The Saturdays that have five Saturdays in a month. But also on a Tuesday, the, the local Methodist church hosts it, but they shut at 11 and often there's a lot of particularly bread left. So someone goes and collects that and then brings it down to our cafe because we're open for 12 till 12. So that means we're now saving bread that was going to waste before. And our Garden of Remembrance is a, a place of peace and quiet, the photo at the bottom there, open to the public. We were delighted to receive a thousand pound community climate fund grant from Horsham District Council, which we're using to create Holbrook Community Orchard within the church gardens. We'll be planting rare Sussex fruit tree varieties, spring bulbs and wild flower meadows. We've already set up hot bin composting and large water butts using money from the grant. And we've got our wildlife pond. There may well be grants in this area that you can apply to. And the council's not particularly good, some of them, at promoting these grants. For Horsham District, it's £50,000 a year set aside for these community grants. And when we first heard of it, it was nearly the deadline and no one had applied because very few people knew about it. Uh, for in Horsham, scout groups, schools, parish councils, churches, all sorts of people can apply. And so for, for things that are to do with saving energy, saving water, helping biodiversity, etc. So we work in partnership to make a difference in Horsham and the surrounding villages with environmental and community groups, churches, councils, schools, businesses and individuals sharing information, resources, expertise and ideas to make a difference. Six churches host the community fridge pop-ups, a Sussex Green Hub, which includes a repair cafe and the community fridge refills and recycling is hosted by the United Reformed Church once a month. We have an exciting community energy Horsham project with plans for a large solar project in conjunction with Horsham District Council, which local people will soon be able to invest in with a good return on their money. South East Climate Alliance is a coalition of local environment, community and faith groups across the South East of England uniting for urgent action on climate change and biodiversity loss. And I represent Eco Churches on the steering group. And it's been really interesting to be working with other environmental groups who in the early years knew very little about what churches had to offer and had no idea about the Eco Church scheme or anything. But it's been great sharing information and ideas and getting to know them. Just Transition Horsham, which has a community allotment, seed and plant swaps. The District Food Bank, which I've mentioned, Horsham Matters, which is a charity which helps the homeless, runs the food bank, and refugee support groups. Global engagement is another key eco church area, and when we choose fair trade, we stand with farmers taking on the climate crisis. Climate change hits those in low income countries the hardest. Increasingly extreme, unpredictable weather is destroying bananas, coffee, cocoa, and other crops. 
Farmers and workers already underpaid have even less to spend on essentials such as education, medical treatment and even food. And they're demanding climate justice. So let's press politicians and business leaders for a fair deal on climate. There are over 6,000 fair trade products, including bananas, biscuits, tea, coffee, sugar, chocolate, wine, clothes and flowers. And churches recommit online every two years to become a fair trade place of worship. It's an easy to fill out questionnaire. It's saved for you so that you don't have to answer it all in one go. And it helps you to review what progress you've made with fair trade. To begin with, it's just a question of using fair trade tea, coffee and sugar. And when you're baking, as Wendy has done, uh, where possible to use one or more fair trade ingredient, which with fair trade sugar, it seems easy to do that. But then you can look at uh, adding, using the chocolate and the cocoa and that with your, with your flavorings and things. To bring about climate justice, we need change at all levels as individuals, churches and societies. And current campaigns which churches are supporting include the Tear Fund Rubbish Campaign Petition, the Christian Aid Make Polluters Pay Campaign and the Fair Trade and Climate Justice Campaigns. At the moment at St Mark's we're promoting the Tear Fund's Rubbish Campaign Petition and there's an excellent video which you can download and are allowed to show in your services and also um, include in saved versions of your services on your websites. There are mountains of plastic pollution and Christians are uniting in global action. Nearly 150 governments looking at the global treaty on plastic pollution. So to please sign the petition and the link will be in the notes that I'll be emailing you. The fifth and last key area in the Eco Church survey is lifestyle and it can be a challenge but our personal and household actions do make a difference. Arosha UK's Wild Christian Project is a bi-monthly email for individuals and households, something to think about and practical actions to enjoy, nurture and protect nature in your homes and communities with your children and grandchildren and through campaigning. The Creation Care Scheme, which was pioneered by Bishop Ruth Bouchega when she was the vicar at St Paul's Church in Dorking, it encourages households of all ages, and this easy-to-use free online questionnaire has ideas for the next steps towards a bronze, silver or gold award. At St Paul's, they developed this scheme for use within their own church, and then other churches heard about it and asked if they could use it too. So now it's been rolled out that any church can access it. It helps households to review seven key areas of life to see where they're doing well and how they can better care for God's creation in worship and prayer, home, garden, travel, food, possessions, community and global engagement. So you can see there are some similarities there with the Eco Church scheme and it works really well uh, to encourage your households to use this. We've been doing this for a couple of years now at St Mark's. The way we do it, um, it's simple for a church to register. People can use this, the scheme without being linked with the church at all. Um, but if your church wants to register, you just need um, permission from your minister for someone with an email um, who will then receive notifications when anybody registers and links with your church. All you will know is part of their email and the household name that they've chosen. And then from your own church mailing list, you have to try and work out who those households are, which mostly you can do. It's tricky with GDPR, that's why they're doing it in that way with part of the email. But if you get stuck and can't work it out, you can contact Creation Care and say, not sure if it's this family or that family, or you could put something in your newsletter. Uh, but we have managed to identify a whole lot as We've got, I think it's 32 families registered now. You can um, download the certificates, you get notified when they've achieved an award. So you can download the certificates. We have a lady who does beautiful calligraphy, so she just adds the household name in a gold, silver or bronze colour pen and then the vicar signs them and we give people the option of being quietly given their certificate by the vicar who tells well done which is great uh, and, but about two thirds are happy to come up to the front of the church during the notices to be given their certificate and a few choose to speak for a minute or two in the microphone and say what they've learned, what they found hard, funny or whatever, just something. Each time we've publicly given some certificates, a few more people have registered and a few more people have gone back to the survey to have a look at what they're doing. Again, it's another free thing that's easy to use. There's now a drawing pin function on it, on each question, for you to use to create a personalised to-do list of questions to go back to, which is great. So do encourage households to take part and to celebrate their successes. 
So you won't see the responses, those are confidential, but you will be notified when a household registers or achieves an award. And the same with the Eco Church survey, the church has to reach at least that level in all the seven areas. But there are now commended and highly commended certificates for those who are doing well in at least five of the seven areas towards the next award, because they found that it was difficult sometimes for people to reach the next level, and that's encouraging people. So we recently gave out the commended and highly commended, and people were really pleased about that. So that is a great new addition. It doesn't take much time to administer it, and do chat with me if you'd like more information. I mentioned the Sussex Green Hub. Um, do pop down to Horsham and visit it if you'd like to. The next one will be on the 28th of October. It's a great chance to see how a repair service, which is for electrical repairs, bike repairs, sewing repairs, refills of things like uh, cleaning up liquid, liquid soap, toilet cleaner, and the refills are sold on a not-for-profit basis. So it's volunteers who are refilling people's bottles for them. There's a green book library and a cafe. The community fridge is there from 10 till 11. Transition Horsham are there chatting with people about how they can grow their own food. And Horsham Eco Churches has a stand there every month too. Sussex Green Living will support groups who want to set up a repair or recycling scheme. And they've now written a document with tips on how to start a repair cafe. So eco-friendly habits, a summary of things we could do. We could walk, cycle, or use transport or car share where possible, repair rather than replace, resell or reuse rather than throwing things away, taking reusable water bottles and cups and lunch boxes with us, saving and using any leftover food, refusing packaging, taking boxes and bags with us when we go shopping, recycling by promoting the local council and charity schemes, turning down the heating, insulating and excluding drafts, having a rug on our laps and wearing more layers rather than turning the heating up, sharing rather than buying, switching off lights, the TV, the computer, anything that uses energy when you're not using them, saving water, turning off the tap when you brush your teeth and using water butts. Find out about the world, plants and animals by reading books and watching programmes. Now, much of that list that I've just read out is the things that my grandparents, probably my parents, and certainly my great-grandparents did, particularly in the years after, during and after the war. So there's a lot that the older generations can teach the younger generations. There's so many young people, including in my own family, wearing little thin strapped sleeveless t-shirts in the winter indoors and then turning the heating up because they're cold rather than putting a jumper on. Uh, so let, let's all uh, chat and see what we can learn from each other. So going back to Eco Church, I've explained about the five key church areas, uh, worship and teaching, management of church buildings and land, community and global engagement, and personal lifestyle. The Eco Church and the denominations have many excellent resources, webinars and recordings, all free of charge to help you begin and continue your Eco Church journey. And I suggest these Eco Church steps. First is to register. Appoint an Eco Church champion or lead and gather a team or group. Start the Eco Church survey and use the need to find out response and then email and chat with people. You, can, you can't download your survey, but you can print it. So you can print off a copy. Uh, I, I like paper copies of things, if it's not, not so environmentally good, but I find it quite good having a clipboard and a paper copy to go around and chat with people to fill in the rest of the answers. Explore your denomination's environment programme as well as the Eco Church resources, and then once you've done all of that, begin to look at the other denominations' resources too. Renew or register as a fair trade church every two years. And have Eco Church as a standard item on your church committee or PCC's um, agenda. This means that at every meeting there is some mention of Eco Church, even if it's just a couple of sentences saying, we've still got, we need more volunteers for the garden or whatever it might be, but it keeps it at the forefront of people's minds. And I've, I'm on the PCC and I've been in very encouraged that now other members of the PCC, when we're discussing something, are asking about the environmental impact of it, whereas previously it was me and the vicar who were always doing that. So it's, uh, that's been a really good tip. Start your eco-church diary and your photos, register with the creation care, 
and have an Eco Church web page, something on your website. So many churches have got nothing to indicate that they're an Eco Church. You don't have to put much on there, and, and who, who people can chat to to find out more. And use the Climate Emergency Toolkit step by step. So here we are today at St John's Church Hurst Green, which was built in 1913. And well done, St John's. It's a bronze ward eco church. The churchyard was derived from ancient meadowland and had, has purple spotted orchids. And in 1997, they designated the left side of the churchyard as a conservation area to protect the orchid and introduce and encourage other wild plant species. Now there's a variety of grasses and colorful wildflowers flourish, including violets, primroses, fritillaries, cowslips, oxeye daisies, red campion, and the orchid. The Creative Community Buzz Project, shown in these photos here, was um, where spring bulbs were planted in the postbox triangle in her screen. 27 people helped to plant bulbs in heavy rain in autumn 2022. Young children, young people and adults with enthusiastic support from other local groups and individuals. And the selection of bulbs were chosen to flower from March until early June, and a high percentage of the bulbs are beneficial to pollinators. That's amazing, well done. In Horsham, we have Horsham Churches Together, which represents 32 churches from Horsham in the district. We created Horsham Eco Churches with a web page, email news, and regular get togethers to encourage and inspire others, share ideas, and find out more about caring for God's world. At that time, there were two eco churches in Horsham, um, mine and um, Brighton Road Baptist Church, both with silver eco church awards, and other churches were asking us how they could get involved. So now there are 14 churches registered with eco church, four have got a bronze eco church award, and um, the two churches with silver are well on our way to gold. And there are currently only 40 gold award churches in England and Wales. Just quickly go through what some of the churches have been doing. It's just some of the things they've been doing. We've got the Cornerstone Methodist Church in London Road in Horsham. They got a Bronze Eco Church Award this year, and they very generously host the community fridge. So they have set aside a room where all the fridges and freezes are and where the volunteers sort the food. Um, and then twice a week, the public come along to get the food. They now have a community fridge cafe on the Thursdays when the fridge is open. Uh, and that starts before the fridge. People queue for an hour or more before the community fridge opens. This was happening a little bit before COVID, but the, the situation with the amount of money that people have available, even in affluent Horsham, is really quite dire. Uh, at St Mark's, last time we held the community fridge, we opened at 10 and somebody came at half past seven in the morning to join the queue. It's the first time they'd ever been, but it was cold that morning. Yeah, we hadn't had a frost because it was a few weeks ago, but it was cold that morning. Um, so now at um, the, at the hub where it is, they've started giving people a ticket as they arrive and saying, go in church in the warm, have a cup of tea, but then your ticket is saving your place in the queue. So they're being able to chat with people and keep them warm while they're waiting for food. And they had a lunch event which was combined with fair trade fortnight with a celebration with displays and showing fair trade films, which was very popular. St Mary's is the parish church of Horsham in the town centre, a grade one listed building founded in 1247. And they got a bronze eco church award a couple of weeks ago, which was great news. They've been developing their churchyard to reflect different community needs and help biodiversity. They had a churchyard bio blitz, which some members of their congregation who know a lot about wildlife and some local experts came to help, and others who knew nothing came to, to help, and they all worked together and identified 155 species of flowering plants and 48 mosses and liverworts, and the most notable species was the rue-leaved saxifrage in the middle of that. St Margaret's Church at Warnham is a semi-rural village church. Uh, they got the Bronze Eco Church Award in 2022. They partner with a local group called Wild About Warnham, who works to benefit wildlife. They leave areas of their churchyard to grow in summer, and they've now learned how to meadow cut it with scythes, which is very exciting. They have a dead hedge with the cuttings from the hedges and the shrubs. Uh, previously, they were burning them. And they work with the Warnham butterfly fields. Um, there are a number of endangered butterflies in the area. Swift boxes have been installed in the village. That's been an exciting project. 
and they repaired and replanted their boundary hedge with native species and created a tidier and more efficient composting station. Life Community Baptist Church has got a bronze eco-church hall in 2022. They don't have their own building. They meet at the Phoenix Stroke Club in Horsham. So they're not responsible for land, but even so, they got permission for the children to create a bug hotel in the nature garden at the Phoenix Club. And the children, super carefully supervised, had great fun upcycling a wooden pallet, sawing and drilling, creating rooms with twigs, leaves, pine cones, and a plant shelf on the top. And they collect recycling just on Sundays from their congregation. And they've been involved with some litter picking in the, church, uh, the school next door. Brighton Road Baptist Church um, was rebuilt in 2008, so it has a modern designed building. They have a silver eco church award and rooftop solar panels. And one of the things they do is their annual carbon footprint campaign. St John's Church at Broadbridge Heath has recently registered with Eco Church. Uh, they've done amazing things in their Garden of Remembrance and in planters they have tomatoes and beans growing as well as beautiful flowers. And coming up soon they have an evening of contemporary dance and community environmental action discussion which is organised by Aluda Dance. I can put you in contact with the young lady, Catherine, who does the dancing, because they would love to go and do, do this in other churches as well. This is my church, St Mark's. We were originally founded in 1841 in Horsham Town Centre, but rebuilt in the north of Horsham in an area of new housing in 1990. We got our silver award in 2018. And we held a treasure safeguard and care for creation conference this time last year, the recordings of which are available online. St Michael's Church Amberley is one of the churches that I've done an eco-church talk about at. They were founded in 670 and the listed building dates to 1100. They have a bronze eco-church award and the churchyard is actively managed for biodiversity with more than 150 species of trees, shrubs and wildflowers. And when I spoke, they were having an eco-fair, which was an amazing event with all sorts of organisations coming along. And they have a, a churchyard prayer trail for it, which was wonderful. And a, a great example of managing a churchyard with long areas of meadow grass, yet with yellow rattle, but carefully mown the edges of the pathway, paths through the older parts of the churchyard, uh, areas completely mowed where you could actually sit under a gazebo with a group of chairs. It was amazing, yeah. So do pop down in the summer if you can and see their churchyard. Climate change can seem overwhelming, but together we can do simple things to help our planet and reduce our bills. Through Horsham Eco Churches, I'm using the One Planet online platform, which enables citizens, companies and governments to collaborate to tackle climate change, build resilient communities and regenerate the Earth's living systems. Humanity's future hangs in the balance and we need to reconnect, rewild our land and cities, farm in ways to regenerate soils, move to clean renewable energy and rethink what is really important to us. Part of One Planet is a kind of mind map. So I'll let you know once it's live, but you look at the mind map and click on things. So for example, for you, on our church one, you would be able to see the mowing plan, our environmental policy. You'd see what our goals and actions are. Horsham District Council is using One Planet. So once our uh, mind map is launched and theirs, we'll be able to cross-link them to see what, what mutual goals we've got and how we can work together. And the idea is that um, other churches can um, do this as well. And One Planet are not charging churches for this. Sorry, I didn't have the slide up, did I? There we go. Um, I've got some, I won't talk through this slide. I've got information about flowers and floral foam and um, the impact that they have on the environment. So uh, you, uh, you can take those away with you. Um, nearly one in six wildlife species are now at risk of extinction compared with one in 10 in 2019. Pollinators have decreased by 18%. June, July and August were the Earth's hottest three-month period on record and a climate catastrophe is unfolding around us, a danger to civilization. But we are called to be God's hands and feet, a voice campaigning for change and making every practical difference we can. 
there's an urgent need for governments and all sections of society to act themselves and to work with others. And we can help to lead the way by using the Eco Church and Creation Care resources to inform our actions now. I mentioned Climate Stewards before. That's part of the Erosha family of organisations caring for God's creation around the world, helping individuals and churches to measure, reduce and offset your carbon footprint while supporting our global neighbours through community carbon offset projects which benefit family health and income as well as biodiversity. Actively enjoy God's creation every day if you can. And for those who can't get out, you can use television programmes, films, books, Bible verses, poetry and photos to bless and inspire you. Switching to renewable energy is one of the most effective things that churches, households and businesses can do. Reduce your carbon footprint and offset your emissions through reputable companies such as Climate Stewards. And consider switching to ethical banking and savings. There are resources about that on the Eco Church website. And create nature and wildlife friendly areas, even just a window box or a doorstep pot with pollinator friendly plants. In Warnham, they, the village gave away packets of seeds to people through their parish magazine to sow a metre square of native wildlife, wildflower seeds. It was very popular. And when I went to their um, s s summer event the following year, one of the front gardens, and I remembered their lovely square, square metre, they'd made the whole front garden into a wildflower meadow. It was beautiful. Yes. Uh, use your voice, discuss and sign petitions, write to your MP. Uh, use the Bible study resources, for example, the tenants of the king, which I mentioned earlier. As a household in a church, take time to review and then start with easy things, little steps, quick wins, but have some longer term goals to work towards too and celebrate your achievements. Keep in touch. Uh, there's a clipboard passing round. That's uh, signing up for the Horsham Eco Churches News, uh, which I manage. It's just a monthly newsletter that comes out via Mailchimp. To begin with, you'll get one that just directly comes from Horsham Eco Churches, and then signed up for Mailchimp. You can unsubscribe any time, uh, and it, within that, it includes how you can directly sign up to a Russia UK online. They have a number of different newsletters which you can get, all of which are really interesting, including the Eco Church one and their Wild Christian one. So if you haven't signed up and you'd like to, please do so. And that's the QR code. If you've got a smartphone with you and want to, you can sign up tonight for the Russia UK there or for the Horsham Eco Churches one. I'll put those back on the screen in a minute. Thank you for listening. And I'd be very happy to take any questions. And I know we're going to have some much needed refreshments, which will be lovely. Uh, do share the slides and the talk notes with others uh, and encourage them to have a go. And do keep in touch with me. That when I email you, you'll have my email. So any questions, do come back to me. Yes. Uh, and when I've done a talk to a church, I do like to keep in touch and see what they're doing. Oh, we've got, there's we've got... a few questions. There's a few questions um, around. I did mm. want to say before I hand out for questions, open today in Oxted, where the old kitchen shop was, is a health food shop which has refill stations. Ooh, yay! That's great. So it's Faith in Nature refill stations. It's really worthwhile. Who had some questions? Um, I'll just get the kettles on. Okay, thanks. What is the sound when you Oh, I can send you a copy of it. Um, we were inspired to try and create a nature trail at the church, at my church. And through our woodland, some people had the idea of making a path because the undergrowth, there wasn't much there of brambles and that. Uh, and it seemed an extraordinary thing to do, but they worked very hard. It's, it's not very wide, the woodland, it's only about this wide. Um, and they made a, and that's like going through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, and a couple of people had felt that the Psalm 23 was very significant. So I worked through the Psalm and tried to work out a route to go around the church, uh, reading and listening to sung versions of Psalm 23. I can send you a, a version of it. I and mean, you can, uh, if you're down in Horsham, come and visit because it's open to the public any time. We're beside Chennels Brook, so people have the option of going on a longer walk just out the side of the churchyard and along by Chennels Brook where there's a more water, yes, which is great. Uh, thank you. I've got the mic. So mm -hmm. um, 
the eco church thing, I thought it was really interesting the examples you gave at the end. Are there any churches where you've seen something and you thought, wow, that's a really good idea that kind of stand out to you as kind of something that was quite innovative and be quite interested to hear what people have done that, that particularly kind of chimed a chord with you? Mm. All the churches that I put up on the slides, yes, they're all doing different things, yeah. I think, um, for me, it was the Christian Life Centre that... Not Christian Life Centre, the... Um, which one is it? The one that doesn't have its own building. Pardon? That's right, Life Community Baptist Church. Yeah. The fact that even though they don't have any land, so for Eco Church, they haven't got to worry about land because they're, they're not responsible for any land. They pay rent to, to use this, this the club, but they wanted to do something and yes. they chatted with the people because there was a little nature garden that had been made. Um, and they, of course, were delighted. Yeah. So they just put that extra effort in and the fact that they're picking up the litter. Yeah. Um, and for me, it's the exciting thing seeing the collaboration between churches of all denominations in Horsham. It's been wonderful. Um, and uh, that's something that I really encourage people to do. Yes. And a lot of churches now across the country are uh, struggling. A lot of people, the congregations haven't rebuilt since COVID. Uh, and some of the churches, all the congregations are old and they have no children. So it's all part of encouraging each other with all, all of that as well. Uh, my church, we're a, a busy, growing evangelical church so with all ages, but we offer a whole range of services. So there's a service really to suit most people to choose from. Um, but it's really exciting. And for me, a highlight was seeing St. Michael's Churchyard, because I've been talking to people about planting yellow rattle to suppress the grass and enable the wildflowers to grow. And then for the first time, I actually saw yellow rattle and how it had worked, which is wonderful. And they have, um, for the flowers, they mostly have like jugs with flowers in that have been picked from the churchyard and the hedgerows all grown on an allotment. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. Oh, just, we'll just take, or oh, should we go first as, as we're next to? Make it easier for passing the microphone around. No, Thank you. Not. Slight <laughs> different tack. Um, I'm here as a church treasurer who mm. has recommended um, that we, we have at our church in Wallingham an annual uh, giving budget. Um, and uh, I was recommended to consider uh, a Russia for money mm. because when we talked sometime last year at the PCC about becoming an eco church and that sort of thing, one of the things that was mentioned as that you could do would be to give to an environmental charity part of your giving. Yes. Now, from what, what you've said, so I came here to find out what a Russia was all about, mm. so I could talk to the other members and say, recommend or not giving money. It doesn't seem to me, tell me if I'm wrong, that, that you know, when we're giving to Christian aid or, or organisations like that, they're, using, they're desperately needing the money to help poor people. Mm. Um, does a Russia need money because it seems mainly to be offering advice to churches? It does need a Russia does need money. Yes, the was talking about the um, church giving to support envir environmental charities. Yes, yeah, a Russia is a very small charity. Uh, as a, an, a as a volunteer speaker, I'm allowed to claim expenses, um, but but myself and many others don't claim the expenses because otherwise that's just taking from the money. But we encourage churches to make a donation. They, because they offer the Eco Church scheme completely free, but they run the webinars, they do talks and you know, all, lo lots of stuff, do a lot of work working together with other organisations. That's been another exciting thing for me, is seeing how things like Tear Fund, Oxfam, Christian Aid, Erosha UK, all these different organisations are working together, particularly now with the Wildlife Trusts and everything, petitioning the government uh, and, and going to COP, the COP conferences and things like that. Um, they have a, a very small number of staff. So going back over their projects, they've got the there's two nature reserves, the Wolffields Urban One, the Fox Earth Meadows Rural One. The Partners in Action project is a support network for Christian land managers. So I don't know if you, any of you know Ashburnham, for example, um, so the, and farms, so they're giving advice to Christian land managers and supporting them because the Christian, the Christian voices aren't always heard. Um, and then the Eco Church project for 
churches and the Wild Christian Project for individuals and families. There's a lot of information on the Arosha website, and I forgot to bring them with me, which was terrible, but I can post you a leaflet that's got a printed leaflet with more information about... Thanks, I would welcome donations. Oh, definitely, yes, yes, and they would be very well spent. Yes, yeah, so. Um, and when you listen to... Um, when they write a comment on something like the State of Nature report or COP and that is, is re real wisdom uh, and it's not just wisdom in understanding the environment and that is the Christian perspective as well which is so valuable mm -hmm. thank, you thank you thank you uh, yes a very practical question I think I heard you say uh, feel free to share the slides yes so how are you going to share them with us I'm going to send you a Google Drive link so you can actually download them. Uh, as, as I've been very careful to try to make sure that they're copyright free. Mm -hmm. A lot of the photos are mine or they're just like the logos of, of charities and things. So that then you can adapt the slides to use for your own. So you might want to just pick a few and change them a bit to use in your church services or to make into posters. I started using Canva recently, which is interesting, <laughs> the way of making posters. Yeah. Uh, and then and I'll also send you a PDF file because that's an easier way to share them with people who just want to look at the pictures and I'll send you a Word document with my notes on. So Thank again, you. you can copy and paste bits from that and web links and things. Thank you very yeah, much. Some churches have a, like an eco slot in their newsletter, some every week, some from time to time or every month. Uh, a Russia UK has um, a monthly eco prayer tips and things that you can use and that, yeah, so. Very helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions before we have a cup of tea? <laughs> I'm not rushing off, so I'm happy to chat with people. At the back, I've got some books and leaflets that you welcomed and posters welcome to have a look at. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of your wisdom. Um, we've got refreshments through the St. John's room there, um, coffee, tea, or some juice and some biscuits. Please have a look at all the resources. I'll turn the lights up and share what you'd know. You'd be interested, perhaps, Karen, that we've got representatives of at least four churches here. So, and what we've taped will go out to all the churches together in Oxford and District, which is 10 churches. So what we've all said and what we've shared and, and your um, input will go out to everybody. So mm. it, will, it will be shared around and we're so grateful for everything. Um, one of the valuable things we've found is um, at the Sussex Green Hub I mentioned, where I have the Horsham Eco Churches stand, not every month, but from time to time, encourage the churches to come along. And we just gather for an hour with a cup of coffee and chat while the hub is going on and just fight, go around the circle. You know, what's your church been doing? What questions have you got? And we've been sharing ideas and inspiring each other. So it's good to just informally get together with other churches and, and see what you're all doing. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.